All righty, my friends. Happy New Year and super excited for our regularly scheduled Thursday celebrations with graduates of my eight week program. And I want to remind you guys, this is not an easy program. <laughs> so this is really like these are um, my students and graduates are, are really I can confidently say that they are the cream of the crop and not everybody has what it takes to be successful in private practice. Um, even with the best skills and the most passion for what we do, it is a really tricky road to being successfully self-employed in this field. So super excited to introduce Ben Witt to y'all. He's from Jackson, Mississippi, and uh, also excited because we get to interview another man. And as you guys all know, this is a female dominated industry. So I, I especially love it when we get our awesome men of massage therapy to uh, take the mic and share their successes and encourage you guys about what's possible. So welcome, Ben. So great to see your face. Hi, thanks, Rebecca. I mean, who would have thought that we'd come this far, right? <sighs> like, well, you know, I don't remember a time without you. <laughs> we met, we, you did your call in October of 2017. Yeah, probably. I remember uh, that because yeah. I was on a trip in Seattle and I remember like I was sitting on the bed and I had my laptop and I, I remember, uh, I just, just really distinctly remember our phone call. And what's so great, it's like, you know, you did the eight week program, then you jumped into some follow-up programs that I, I don't, uh, don't offer anymore, but I was offering the time. And now you're in our 12 month mastermind for world changers. And it's like, everywhere I go, there you are. It's the best. <laughs> I think you were the only guy that came to our live event in Las Vegas, right? You were our token male for our live retreat. I think so. Other than Steven, yep. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. So you guys, I just, you know, Ben is such an amazing man with an amazing heart, amazing skills. He is a father, he is a husband, and he is kicking boote in his massage practice. Mm -hmm. And just really today, I think the theme is really about daring to dream bigger, you know, and not settling for mediocrity, not settling for getting by, but really looking at what were you put on this planet to do and building a business around that. So great to have you here, Ben. Thanks. Okay. So share with us um, just a little bit about yourself and your niche and your practice, and then how you found me, how we got connected. All right. Um, so obviously Facebook probably was the main, I just was drawn to the, yeah. this group. Um, I graduated from, um, this is my, I'm, I've been a massage therapist for three years. Before that, I was a high school teacher and uh, for a short stint, a stay-at-home dad. And then um, I did computer mar mapping and stuff like that out in Texas when I was, I actually finished grad school. So I have a master's degree. Wow. Um, but other than that, I mean, I've, 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 I've hopped around. So, um, but this is where I've landed on a very personal um career choice as far as where I am. So it's not my first rodeo in terms of um, being out there, as, but I've always had that drive towards integrity and building something, wanting to do something bigger and, and better and just sort of make sure I'm doing a good job, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and not settling, like you said, for the mediocrity. I'm trying to keep growing, grow, grow, grow. Um, yeah, but originally from Nashville uh, and came down here to Jackson. And um, uh, after I graduated massage school, I just kept, I got right into structural integration stuff and just kept pushing for, towards that. It just drew me in. Um, and I've enjoyed working with my clients here in, in Jackson. Um, got a great group so far and I've enjoyed growing slowly. And uh, I've been very lucky to have fallen into some a, a good uh community where I rent my business from a uh, place a yoga community there and it's got a um, acupuncture clinic and a Pilates instructor all different small businesses kind of grouped together in one little space and um, we all have our own uh, agendas but we're working for with each other and between and cross-pollinating and so that's kind of built in you know um, so yeah, that's that's been my place, and it's been a, a good ride so far. Finding finding this group was awesome. You know, I just kind of I couldn't get enough. You know, soak it in, and so whenever you would go live or whenever um, topics would come up, it was always an opportunity to um, 
just grow, take more in. And I'm one of those people that I, I, I have to hear it a lot of times before it sometimes soaks in and put it into practice. So that inner voice thing, it's like, okay, now I know what to do. Instead of doing this, I'm going to go do it this way. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I like to sit in these groups. And I, sometimes I call myself a submarine because I, I, I'm quiet and deep. And I don't say much. A little under the surface. And then you I pop can, up. <laughs> and then I pop up occasionally. So and so I'm always listening and soaking this stuff in. And, and it's been really uh, good for not only business, just from a very, very much a personal thing, yeah. a mindset thing. So it, it was the, the stepping stone towards even bigger personal growth um, in other ways. So I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, well, my pleasure. Thanks for taking everything I have to offer because I'm here to serve, you know? So <laughs> tell me, what was, the, what was the reason that you decided that you needed help? You know, were you, were you, when you applied, when you booked a call with me, like what, was there something that you heard? Was there something that was happening? What was the motivation behind that? Uh, so um, I know you know that uh, when I started, I was inside another business. So I was sort of working as a contractor, which most um, massage therapists do. Yeah. But I was also creating my own business. I had my own business name because when I finished graduate uh, massage school, I just went ahead and made an LLC because I was working. I was just almost immediately was contracted with uh, Hi, uh, the college here, the athletic department, Millsaps College in Jackson, uh, my alma mater, Phil Millsaps. Um, so I went immediately to that. So I was, I was wise enough to make a business, but then I was like, well, let's just keep going. So I made that business and then decided I'm just going to go for it. And things progressed. I started working inside another business as a contractor, but also my own business. So there was this sort of weird problem of things not quite working the way they should. Um, and that just precipitated in me wanting to bubble off and be my own business. And that's where I was. Hold on, Ben. Somebody's calling me on Facebook Messenger. I have to make it go away. I don't know how. <laughs> hold on. It's not me. I don't know if you can hear it, but I... I can hear it. Okay, hold on. I'm not sure <laughs> go away. I'm getting phone calls all the time, right? Okay. I guess it's gone. I or It's going. I don't know how to... I have to mute it. Hold on. So many windows open. I can't make it go away. You know. Here we go. Ah, that might have got okay. it. Sorry. It's All a good. sign. People are reaching out. Yes. We're talking about you reached out. So, okay. So, sorry. So, why did I reach out? Yeah, that, that's yeah. where I was. I needed to grow and I was sort of responsible for the growth. Um, but I also wanted to be my own thing. So, at that point was when I realized it was time to branch out. Cool. Cool. Branch out meaning what? Meaning when I told you the situation, you said, how's that work? <laughs> and I said, well, um, um, uh, um, uh, well, and we explored that a little more. And as time went on, uh, I just sort of things changed. So yeah. I went on on my own, found my own it, office. Was it really that you were in kind of a confusing situation with your Sure, of course. Then we, we mm -hmm. I, I, I probably I, talked enough about that because I have so many people that are in just the craziest situations as independent right. contractors, renters. Uh, it's so many blurred lines that it's like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? Right. Without, without a contract, with no agreements. Yeah. Scared yeah, yeah. to get out of it. Yeah. And I feel like, as I recall, and I think about what was going on in your life at that time, that that was really a, um, that was really a big problem. Was oh, it? sure. Yeah. <laughs> didn't really know what you were like. Um, I think I'm in a situation that I shouldn't be in. Mm -hmm. And when we talked, got real clarity on that. I was like, yeah, you pretty much don't have control over what you think is your own business. Right. You know, and that was rough. That was one of the, that was one of the uh, things we had to navigate, mm -hmm. right? During the program. So we solved that problem. Yeah. I don't think that happened during the program. You got clarity on it, but I think it was afterwards. Didn't you leave the, right? you ended up leaving and that was hard and there were friends and there was kind of loyalty mm -hmm. issues and stuff going on. That's yeah. right. But that, you know, all those things have, have on water under the bridge at this point, I hope. And uh, yeah. I still, you know, but yeah. um 
Yeah. So that was after the program. It took, it took, like I said, it took more than eight weeks to knock some sense into me. But in that time I did rebrand, <laughs> you know, I had a strong brand at the end and it was built on the lessons in the program and uh, mm. was a lot stronger coming out than going in yeah. and a lot of more confidence business-wise, uh, a lot more policies and a lot more uh, things like that, that, that really made it a much more uh, integral business, you know, model. Yeah. than just floundering in somebody else's business. And I, you know, it made me able to get out there and do my own thing confidently. And I'm enjoying it. I really am enjoying it. It's kind of part, part project, part puzzle, yeah. <laughs> you know, and yes. just, and learning, learning about making mistakes and, 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 and having a support group there to fall back on and go, ah, what have I done? And this person's done this. What do I do? Or, Oh, I made a mistake. What do I do? And that, that stuff right there is huge because otherwise you'll just go, oh, I'll give it to them for free and, or I'll give it, you know, race to the bottom stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. Let me back down. Let me back up. Yeah. So, so far, you know, you got power and clarity and confidence, but you also got structure, which as I often say, a passion without structure is an expensive hobby. There you it's go. Not business, and you needed this to be a business. Why was it important for you to get get success, you know, and financially, and and really make this a business for you? Um, you know, originally, you know, what were my goals was to, um, you know, my my wife is a, a physician. She does make more money than I do, mm -hmm. but um, that was beside the point which was important a lot of people in this business are surviving this is their bread and butter mine was a little different and it's fact that you hit on that with the whole I mean I could make this a hobby thing and do it two days a week and probably be just fine but I, I really needed some goals and, and, and personally in my own psychology I thrive on on um I thrive a lot better on having goals. Now I'll survive without them and I have for a long time, but having those goals and something to push forward towards has been part of my uh, personality. Yeah. So um, that helps me be a healthier person. Yeah. And so I, I, I enjoy that um, professionalism side of it. A lot of people see that in my business is that, oh, he, I've never had a massage therapist who has their stuff together. You know, yeah. that's what they'll say to me. You know, it's like uh, you have the most, uh, you know, technologically advanced software I've ever seen. And it really just is massage book, you know, or whatever it is. So um, for those of us that are out there trying to do it right, that people yeah. are usually surprised at the most minimal of efforts, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so. well, it does speak to the problem in the industry that I'm out to impact, right? Which is that most massage therapists don't know how to build a business. And so they're out there kind of putting their best effort forward, but not realizing how they are received by the public is probably not in the, in the light that they would like to be received. And then they struggle and struggle and they wonder why they're not getting rebookings or wonder why they're not attracting clients. And they're like, well, hey, it's, you know, massage by Ben. I mean, what's the problem? And here's my Wix website. And, and here's my, you know, my Facebook page with a bunch of posts about all the benefits of massage. I, why am I not getting clients? And it's like, that's why you're not getting clients because you're not approaching it right. So, you know, nice to know that you have that in place now and that your clients are recognizing that mm -hmm. and saying, wow, you actually have your stuff together. You're not just a fly by night, flaky massage therapist, which uh, sadly lots are, you know, right. so good. So what's changed for you in your life just since you've gotten control of your business? How is that? I'm just curious how that's impacted your, you know, your personal life, not just your mm. professional. I mean, you're making money now you've doubled your, you know, your revenue over last year, you're moving things in a positive direction and going even bigger, you know, as we're working together even more, but um, like, what's, you know, just what does it change things for, <clears throat> for your wife, your marriage, your personal sense of confidence, your, how you show up as a dad? I'm just curious. I hope you don't there was, there was, an, there was an interesting persona thing when I became a teacher, it was like, oh, you're a teacher. So you embodied that thing. It's that cultural sort of an enigmatic, oh, you, you play this role. And people saw you in that role and massage has that same thing. Oh, you're a massage therapist. And they'll say something stupid or they'll call you a masseuse, which, which we have to kind of ebb and flow with that. Um, it's not as a congealed 
cultural vision to be a massage therapist as it is to be a teacher and it's not revered by by any means in the same way so in that sense um for me to transition to a new professional role um was was different um and i only say that because i'm kind of playing the role of massage therapist it's you know um out there when you're talking to people and and and, and for me it's an opportunity to educate people and to show them and improve what a massage therapist is mm. so it's not i mean like i say the teacher thing comes built in everyone oh you're a teacher god bless your heart you know you're you're out there it's a tough job you don't get paid whatever 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 and you work hard and i got that um, and i understood that um for massage therapists there's less there's just less evidence for people to build on now i say all that from the from a professional side to, to say that, okay, now I'm rolling with that and I'm trying to make it into something bigger. Like we say, masterminding, um, elevating the industry um, on, on, on the small things, you know, when people talk to you. Right. Um, it makes a big difference, Ben, you know, that you're yeah. out there and people are getting a sense of what massage therapists are about. I mean, you're really, you've been, you've become my partner in elevating the industry, not only just by your own example, but also right. being aware of like what else is wanted and needed that we can innovate on to, to, change the public perception of massage therapists sure and and then personally you know like i think my, my wife is very happy with m me having a successful business that's cool um mm -hmm. she she likes to uh, promote me in that sense um and my son sees me as you know a professional so that's great mm -hmm. um he knows that i own a business sometimes i have to remind him i'm like uh because he's 10 so he's all over the place um and uh he uh I'll say, you know, I own a business. <laughs> I'm not just a massage therapist. You know, he kind of gets it and then he runs off and makes noises. But yeah. um, <laughs> that kind of thing, he, he understands that dad's a business owner. And that's something I want to impress upon him mm -hmm. and a professional so that he sees that integrity and kind of uh, absorbs that as he grows. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one of the personal things that, that I always wanted to embody in, in him was to that in, integrity and, and the professionalism of what you do, you know. Wow. Yeah. Um, no matter what it is and he'll, he'll probably not be a doctor and he'll probably not be a massage therapist then we'll, we're okay with both both of us are okay with that right. um because it is what it is everybody's the way they are um yeah so those are some good personal things i know it was also important to you when we talked you know that you said yeah my need is not so much like financial you know my my wife is a doctor and you'd been kind of like the primary caretaker at home of your son but that for you it was just like but I also have things I want. I don't want to just, I can use that word loosely, you know, be a stay at home dad, you know, that you can pursue your own passions. And, but it, I remember when we talked, it was important to you that you could build something that was flexible around your son. Exactly. Yeah. The flexibility thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you've made some, you're making some big changes this year about with your schedule, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm just writing it down over here before we got on our call about yeah. rerunning some thoughts and numbers. I have the same notes about six times on here. <laughs> okay, we'll get you yeah. sorted out. We got our mastermind call in an hour, so we're, we'll be good, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, to be able to say, no, I only want to work nine to five. You know, yeah. a lot of massage therapists have a hard time setting that boundary because they they believe, you know, that most massage therapists work in the evenings after everybody else is done working, you know, but then when you're, you have a conflict there, because if your goal is I want to be home, you know, I want to be there for my son. I want to be there after school, you know, that creates a whole other conundrum, which is how do I limit my hours and still get the kind of clients that I want and the kind of results that I want in my business, mm. you know? So that's like next level, next Ooh. level stuff. Most and that's uh, just another set of problems. <laughs> another set of problems, yeah. <laughs> but you feel a lot more confident solving those problems. Because I definitely have clients who are used to coming in after five, so. Yeah. You also light. said, I forgot, you said you were stagnant and you said not having a clear message meant I was getting non ideal clients, including creepers. You were oh, getting yeah. creepers? A handful, not many. Like um, men, women? Well, I'm so curious about that. I, it, it, I think, honestly, I would, you know, well, there's, there was, there was a handful, far, far fewer than, um, both genders and sort of like curious emails, Yeah. you know, and, and because you, you know, more than massage, <laughs> do you really want me to go into specifics? <laughs> um, I forgot about that, that you were just kind of being everything to everyone. Whereas now you're, you know, super dialed in with, I had a Vista print, uh, 
business card with the hands on the body. Everybody oh, yeah. has that one. I've seen that one a thousand times. Yeah. A thousand times. And I put it in benign places like the fancy popsicle shop on the billboard where everybody else has it. And I'm telling you that that after I, within a week of doing that, and only put it in four or five places. So yeah. Hashtag the worst ways to advertise. How to get the worst clients, right? And then, and then, you know, certain people, just like we know, I mean, certain people are shopping around for somebody who will bend the rules. So yeah. I got a few of those and uh, yeah. just, and that was even after I'm in my current place, which was yeah. interesting. And that was like, okay, no. <laughs> yeah. And so I learned to fire clients yeah. and the program and everything like that. So um, then again, few and far between, thankfully. Um, and that marketing just wasn't working. <laughs> there are much better ways. Now you have Mississippi is a little what? lower and slower. Mississippi is a little lower and slower and more uh, who you know, uh, word of mouth, I should say. Um, and so. Yeah. But what you're doing is working. And you're yeah. Um, you have a clear plan to get next level stuff, get where you want to go. And I still have things to work out. Yeah. You know, putting myself out there. I know a lot of us are, are fearful of that, and I'm right there with you. So, yeah. By the way, the fear never goes away, right? Mm -hmm. It never does. All all pros at anything know that the fear never leaves you. You just have to strengthen the muscle of taking action in the face of the fear. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it yeah. takes time. Like for me, being sort of that slow grower, and many of us out there probably are. It's that it really takes me two or three practice runs to really go, okay, get over the fear, go hand out whatever you're going to hand out or yeah. look, make the call you're going to make. Um, just the inertia, the yeah. emotional inertia, you know, of pushing through that part. And after that, you're like, oh, I got this. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, because it's, there's a law in the universe. It's called grow or die. Mm -hmm. And once you realize, well, I don't want to die, you know, all my business to die. I don't want to slide backwards. Then you know, then that becomes for me more scary than, than what I, doing whatever needs to be done in order to get the result that you want, you know. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. It's, uh, and I, I've been very lucky to be just sort of supported by the universe when I'm out there doing my own crazy ideas. Luckily I haven't, um, you know, floundered or had any deep explosions mentally yeah. or physically, you know, or business. <laughs> taken care of out there so well we caught you early on in your career that's the good news where would you be right now had we not met two years ago can you imagine and i'm not saying that to toot my own horn i no, just no. know that it makes a difference to have support and guidance and and a lot of people they just kind of have that they have that delusional optimism of oh i'm good at what i do and all my friends said that they would book appointments with me and i'm just gonna go for it and then they it's not very fun two years into that when they realize that's not actually working. So mm. where do you think you would be mm. have strategy and clarity? Yeah, I think I, it, I may still be in the same situation I was before. I may be having an office where I was floundering. I may have gone back teaching. I yeah. may have, uh, who knows? Yeah. So it's, it's been a good, uh, renaissance of sorts to kind of go, okay, here we go. Yeah. buckle up yeah so who knows yeah. i love it any uh, final words of advice for anybody watching what is it that you want all massage therapists to know or understand um you're just making me think of you're making me think of good job yeah i know you're making me think don't make me do that um you know just oh i know what it was you know i turned 40 last year and um, so, like I say, chapters in life, open and close. And isolation is really one of the hardest things out there. So we talk about getting a coach or finding a group, uh, getting help, getting, um, this is almost like a recovery program, you know? It's almost, and I'm not saying like alcoholism, I'm talking like just mentally, physically, emotionally. It's like, it, it really is a community. Um, of, of, of like-minded business people with a, 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 a heck of a, a leader at the helm and, um, and a support cast that's really there to let you grow at your own pace. Um, 
and to explore and, and go back and forth into, into what you need to do to grow. Yeah. It's not a linear thing, you know, that growth. So I encourage people, both business and personal, to, to reach out, find connections in both um, mentally and, and, and business, you know, groups that really will help you grow and get past the uh, limiting beliefs that we all have and the issues. Man, getting with other people that are, I mean, we talk about, oh, I don't want to pay the money to be in, uh, I don't want to go to that meeting, it's twice a week and or whatever it is, you know, all those things are hard, but um, just making the effort to get that structure for me has been huge. And then once you're in it, like I say, sitting in that and just absorbing the, the, the healing power of community and, and that restorative redemption of, of, of community um, is huge. Yeah. You know, even, even if you grow slowly and flounder and, but then you're just spiraling up you know consistency yeah. yeah yeah consistent like i think about i was putting together a piece of furniture the other day and it had a ratchet you know like the little allen wrench but mm -hmm. it was a ratchet because it was like corners and things you couldn't exactly mm -hmm. you know and i thought about that and it was like even if i move that ratchet one click it's progress and if i consistently do a bunch of little mm -hmm. tiny clicks like that i'm eventually going to get those two pieces to come together and stay together you know but never underestimate the power of just one tiny little motion forward. And if you got consistently, you're going to look back and see how far you've come. Yeah. So I love that. And mindset, and yeah. you know, it yeah. really, it really is everything. So, yeah. And, and like you say, we're, we're here to serve and the higher powers that be that we all believe in our own way. That's that we serve, you know, that, that, that part of it as well is there. And so, um, kind of giving that to channel through you is something that's that's another piece of the puzzle so yeah. well you know to put my quote in front of y'all right there it is doing the world any favors by dimming your light it's your duty to shine some things you wanted to come through here and your practice is not just about getting bodies on the table it's about who you serve and it's about you fulfilling your purpose for being here you know and everybody has that they're either embracing it or they're denying it running away from it or pretending it doesn't matter I say it matters. And going back to what you said about integrity, you know, integrity at the deepest level is being true to who you are, you know, and then taking actions consistent with it, even if it's scary, it's always scary, but even taking action, these little tiny forward motions is what gets you the, gets you the results in the long run. So thanks, yay. Rebecca. Thank you. Oh, yay. You're awesome. You know, really, really appreciate what you bring to our tribe and and what you stand for in the industry and i'm so excited for what's next for you because i know you're up to really big things i need you guys that's right grow or die everyone <laughs> that's the theme so all right my friend well we'll let you go i'll be chatting with you in our next coaching call here coming up but that's right thank you so much for making time this morning to share your words and your wisdom with everybody thanks guys all right, thanks my rebecca dear. Talk to you see you bye, bye. So that's my friend, Ben. And oh my gosh, to know Ben is to love Ben. He's just one of the greatest people, you know, that I, uh, in this tribe that we get to associate with and, and, and get to know personally and, and to serve and uplift you guys. Um, so lots of good takeaways. I'd love to know what you got. What are the key points that you're taking away today? Feel free to put that in the comments below. If you have any questions for me or for Ben, or just want to give him a shout out and say, Congratulations on your consistent growth. Um, feel free to put that in the comments below, okay? And then also, if you're interested in seeing if you have what it takes to be a part of my eight-week program, again, you guys remember, this is not something that's open for everybody. It is, we don't offer you a spot unless we're absolutely confident we can help you and that it's a good fit. So we offer a free 60-minute discovery call where you get to look with me or one of my team members who's trained to do these awesome calls that the goal is clarity. The goal is that you get massive value and massive clarity out of these calls and they're free, okay? There's literally no obligation. There's no pressure. It's not a sales pitch. You get to talk with me or one of my coaches that uh, is trained to do discovery calls, Amy. She's awesome. The, some, so many of you have gotten to talk to her and she's just got a heart of gold. We truly, truly care about your success. So please, if you're even curious 
or you just know, oh my gosh, enough is enough. I don't want to struggle and flounder on my own. Go ahead and just schedule a call with us. All right. You can go to rockyourmassagepractice.com and click on the link that says work with me or click on, sorry, the tab that says work with me. And there's some of the details about the program as well as the link to apply. All right. Rock and roll, you guys. Thanks for joining me today. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.